For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Hi guys, so if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, the death, his burial, his resurrection, you believe that you're a no good, filthy, wretched sinner. You can do no good. Nothing can save you. Not, not enough good works can save you. Not going to church can save you. Not water baptism can save you. Nothing. You believe on Jesus Christ. That moment when you believe on Jesus Christ with your heart. And that moment you become saved. Sealed until the day of redemption. Cannot lose your salvation. You are now a child of God. Just like Jesus cannot go back into the grave and go back onto the cross. You cannot go back into the, into the grave and go back onto the cross and die. You cannot be unborn. Jesus cannot go back. You cannot go back. It is a one-time event. Salvation is eternal life. It is a free gift. It is Jesus' free gift to all who believe on him. Okay? Can't lose your salvation. Now, once you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he will begin to do a good work in you. And this is where the discipling comes through. Okay? If you read into, if you read verse 10, for we are his workmanship Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, I'm going to explain to you that you cannot lose your salvation. But what can you lose as a Christian? Well, you can lose rewards in heaven. Um, and I, everyone is different. We all are on different walks on earth. On our walk with Christ Jesus, it's all different. We're all in different seasons. Um, but again, this is all about discipleship. This has no more have to do with salvation. You are already seated in heavenly places. You have already eternal salvation forever and ever. Amen. Okay, so you should be rejoicing. Okay. Um, but as you walk out your salvation, he does want us to do good works and it should come natural. And sometimes things happen or works, um, manifest and we don't even realize it because when you, the commandments are when you love the Lord with all of your heart and you love your neighbor, you do things guys that you don't even realize that you're ex uh, uh, manifesting in the spirit. Okay. So let's go into first Corinthians chapter three. And I be and I brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk, which is the gospel and not with the meat which is discipleship for for hitherto you were not able to bear it neither yet now are you able for you are yet carnal for whereas there is among you envying which i see a lot on youtube strife and divisions are you not carnal and walk as men for while one saith i am paul and another i am apollos are you not carnal? <laughs> who then is Paul? Who and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. 
For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Okay, let me explain this to you. We're not made to go to an actual building and Christ doesn't live in that actual building. We in the New Testament, we are under we are in the grace age. So we have the building inside of us. We are the temple of God. Okay? There's no more laws, there's no more sacrificing lambs and turtle doves and all these different things. The building liveth inside of us. Okay? And so it's all about the blood of Jesus. So you can go to church, you can do many different wonderful, beautiful works. But if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're not saved. And um, I want to talk about husbandry. We are God's husbandry. Now, I looked in the Greek. And husbandry is 1091 in the Greek. And it's pronounced gi one gi on. And it's basically land, a land worker, a former. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty cool. We are God's former. Like former, the former that works in the fields. Okay. We are God's land worker. We are his former. Okay. And it says that we are the building of God. We are God's building. So our works after we get saved, we want to do the good works. And I'm not against the many good works that we are supposed to do. A lot of the times we don't even see them because when you do it in the name of love, it just manifests naturally. Okay. According to the grace, verse 10, of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than this is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So, ultimately, everything is supposed to uh, be in the, name of, in the name of Jesus. You do everything unto the Lord. Okay? Jesus Christ is our foundation. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Verse 15, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. This is talking about the rewards, okay? We don't, uh, we don't want to just be saved and just go back out in the world and do whatever we want and sin and sin and sin, okay? You're you're going to lose your rewards and you don't want to do that. You don't want to face Jesus and do that. Okay. Now there's going to be two lines. There's going to be, or, and remember salvation for you has already been established. This has nothing to do with salvation, but everything to do with the rewards that you will receive in heaven, which we don't even deserve. But let me explain the two lines that will be in heaven. There will be a line for the great white throne judgment. You don't want to be there. That's for the all the unbelievers. Who have never trusted in Jesus Christ. Then there's a line for the believers. And they will be judged on what they did for the Lord. Their works. Not their salvation. But by their works. Okay. And that's called the, the great. Uh, that's called. Um, the judgment seat of God. Okay. That's the line you want to be in. <laughs> um, so there will be a lot of people who would be yet so as by fire they will be saved, which would be very sad. You don't want to do that. Verse 16, know ye not that you are the temple of God? I just said it. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit 
and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Okay. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple are you, or you are. Verse 18, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him be a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men. We are not to be pleasers of man. I don't care who I lose in my life, and you shouldn't either. Um, we are only to be pleasers of the Lord. For all things are yours. Hallelujah and amen. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the, wor or, or the world or life or death or things or present or things to come, all are yours. That means Jesus has set us free. Everything that he has is ours. Okay? We are his... He is our Father now. You are Christ, you and you are Christ, and Christ is God. Okay, now let me go to Second Corinthians chapter 5. This is all about the reward system, has nothing to do with salvation. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God. And a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So, again, we have for, we have eternal salvation forever and ever. This is not a salvation issue. Okay, this has nothing to do with salvation, but everything to do with what we do uh, as disciples for the Lord. And we want to ultimately, ultimately, we want to please Jesus. Okay, now. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon our house, which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For that, uh, excuse me, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, be in burden, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that has wrought us for the self same thing is God. Who also has given us the earnest of the spirit. Therefore we are always confident. Wow we are always confident guys. Because we again we have eternal salvation. We should be rejoicing. Knowing that with we are at home in the body. We are absent from the Lord. Hallelujah. For we walk by faith not by sight. We are confident. Oh we are confident guys. We have already been saved. Sealed and delivered. I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. And that is what I'm talking about. We are going to be in the, if you are saved, the salvation is not going to be determined then. It's only of what we've done in the body according to that he has done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Okay. Um, 11. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. I'm persuading you guys. But we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we command or commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. Okay? For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, that if one died for all, then we are all dead. We are dead Okay, we have been, we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. And that if, and that he died for all that which liveth, should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto which died for them and rose again. So we're not to live for ourselves anymore. It's not about us anymore. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Let's take our eyes off of ourselves and just look towards Jesus and love one another and grow in Christ Jesus. Grow in the grace. 
Wherefore henceforth um, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet not henceforth know we know him more. So he's like, no, we're, it's not a, a, we're, we're dead. We're dead. We're dead. Our sins have been washed clean. Verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I just said that. Hallelujah. Oh, things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of God who has reconciled us to him self by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech ye by us we pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him we got to know who we are in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Okay, when he looks upon his children, he doesn't see sin anymore. Okay, he doesn't see that. He sees himself because guess what? You, you know how you have your earthly father and he, your earthly, you look just like your earthly father. Okay, he, that's the same. It's symbolically, Jesus looks at his children. He doesn't see filthy wretches anymore. Okay. Our sins have been clean. They're they're gone. They're done away with. This is not a salvation ish, issue. This is a discipling uh situation here. Okay. Don't get those two things mixed up. You can't do anything to save yourself. You can't do enough uh good works to save yourself, guys, is what I'm trying to say. It's all about the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, it's nothing, it has nothing to do with us. Okay, I want to read in Ephesians chapter 4, 17 and 32. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not other, not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated, alienated <laughs> from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over into okay I can never really say this word lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness and greediness but ye have not so learned uh, Christ if so, be ye that you have heard him and have been taught by him and as the truth is in Jesus. So there was a lot of Gentiles who were still walking in uncleanliness and greediness. Okay, that's not what we're supposed to be doing as disciples of Christ it has nothing to do with salvation. Verse 22, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather him, let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good. So yes, we are to labor because we are God's land worker. We are God's former. And that's F-A-R-M-E-R -E in the fields. <laughs> Hallelujah. Le okay, so let no corrupt communication proceed out of the mouth. But that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you were sealed until the day of redemption. He's letting you know, this, has, this is not a salvation issue. This is not a salvation issue. You were sealed to the day of redemption. 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Okay. And I'm going to do Ephesians 1. Who doesn't want to please the Lord? Okay. As disciples. 
According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us into the adoption of children of by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory and of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. So, it, this, again, has nothing to do with salvation. I feel like I have to keep saying that because people are only in the milk and, 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 and if you just speak if, if you say anything else after the gospel, they put you in a legalistic group. And it's it's shameful. It's shameful. Um, Titus 2, 11 through 15. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Hallelujah. Teaching us that denying. Now, what is the Holy Spirit? What does God teach us, guys, after we are saved? Denying un denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly righteously and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and that glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ because why do we look at that blessed hope because we are already saved this is not a salvation issue okay 14 who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify himself into a peculiar people zealous of good works not because to get us saved or to maintain our salvation but because we love jesus because we know who we were before jesus and because we want to please him has nothing to do with salvation. These works, these zealous works, will never have nothing to do with your salvation once you become saved. Okay? These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Hallelujah. And that's all I'm going to say. I love you. Greetings and, and bless it um, to the church. I love each and every one of you. Hallelujah and amen.